Pisces, it's me Stormy and here's your horoscope for October 2018. And Pisces, before we jump in, the 2018 holiday gift is up and available on the website stormygrace.com or you can click in the description box down below and take advantage of those holiday discounted appointments and there's also gift certificates. So I think right now for live booking, the appointments are only in January. I think everything else is full. So make sure you hop in and take advantage, okay? All right, Pisces, so this month the big news is that Venus is going to be going retrograde. So I hope you have checked out my Venus retrograde video. If you have not, it is the very first one in the October playlist. So please check it out just so you can be prepared, know what's going on, know what's coming, especially because Venus can honestly be such an emotional kind of energy because it has to do with romance, value, and finance. And you are a water sign, so you want to kind of know what's coming when we're going to really push on these emotional buttons, right? Not to mention, Venus is going to be retrograde, so taking us backwards, re-looking at, reconsidering, re-editing, re-interacting with, rejoining, right? So we're going to be taking it to the back, and it's in the sign of Scorpio, a fellow water sign, but he is not afraid to go to hell and back, right? Looking for the truth, looking for intimacy, looking for the depth here, right? So this energy is going to be, I think, intense for you, but also very useful. Not intense, scary, intense, useful. This is going to be taking a retrograde through your ninth house. Now, Pisces, first and foremost, the thing that I teach the ninth house about is faith. Okay, this is a place of faith. You're either going to really trust that the universe has got your back or you're not. So you're either in motion because you believe the universe has got your back or you're not. Now going backwards with the ninth house, one of the things I think of is maybe you're going back to maybe you're recommitting to your faith. For some of you, you could be recommitting to your faith by recommitting to an actual religion. You could also be going back and recommitting to your faith because you're just in a different place and you realize that the connection and being in the flow is important. So whatever that means or looks like to you. But this could easily be anything. Higher education, are you going back to school? Are you going back to get a certification? Are you going back to teaching? Are you going back in an alumni fashion to maybe a place that you were before? Now here's the other thing that I think of for you, Pisces, probably my favorite thing is because Venus asks so much about value, I think you're going back to a project or something that you wanted to put out before, but maybe you never did anything with. Maybe something that you were interested in. Pisces, you've been finding your feet in your own passion over this last year and really finding your voice to speak up and put it out there. So I think that this is another level of broadcasting yourself in some way, but you're getting it ready this month. You might not be completely ready to launch, but it's almost as if the pieces are falling more into place. Let's say that it was photography and you just could not afford a camera at that time. During a Venus retrograde, they may be dropping the prices so much that now you can't afford it. That is a good investment. Now what you don't wanna do during a Venus retrograde is go buy the camera at its regular price. If somebody drops it or is selling something, it makes the opportunity for you to get what you needed, get the material possession you needed to move forward, that's a phenomenal investment, right? So look for these opportunities and question in your ninth house, what's the value of what you're doing? Because I do think that a couple of you two may look around and say, you know what? I have no idea why I'm in this educational program. I have no idea why I'm following this particular brand of faith. This is not filling me and nurturing me with value. I need to move towards whatever it is that actually fills and fulfills that space. Now, whatever comes up, remember it's coming up and rising to the surface so that we can swipe it off, wipe that slate clean and move forward. Now, Venus retrograde is absolutely phenomenal for bringing back past lovers, right? So, you know, I don't know, did you date a teacher that one time? Did you have the college romance that just was the one that got away? These things, whether it be the actual people or a memory or a vision or something about that, it's pointing you towards passion and value. It's also coming up because maybe it's time to let it go and move forward in a different way. Maybe it's time to not be tied to that particular romantic past anymore. More. Oh, just got this too. Pisces, if you are a Pisces who has been struggling with debt, 
some solutions may be coming up for you. And the idea here is not to beat yourself up about it. It's to move forward with maybe some opportunities this month that show up to actually be helpful to you to help you move forward. So healing and letting go, okay? Now all of that begins to go down on the fifth. Now, if you're sensitive to the, the retrograde energy, you may have been feeling it earlier in the shadow time here at the end of September. I know I was, but I'm a Taurus. Now on the eighth of the month, we've got a new moon happening in Libra. So the new moon, we plant these seeds of intention, right? What do we want? What do we want this to look like when it goes forward? We plant those seeds, but here's what happens when we plant those seeds, right? Think about your garden or a garden. You plant the seeds, you water it, you make sure it has sunshine, and then you leave it alone. You are not over there staring at it, waiting for the seed to bloom, right? And that's very much so what needs to happen this month. Plant those seeds, do the little footwork that needs to be done here, and then leave it alone and let the universe nurture it on up. Now, this new moon is going to be happening in your eighth house. That's where Libra sits for you. So this is phenomenal for joint resources. Who knows? Maybe over the next four weeks, you've got a partner, even if it's a business partnership where somebody is getting some money coming towards them right? There could be a new opportunity. I'm a YouTuber. I think of things like sponsorships and brand deals and collaborations happening. You could have something like that. This is also in Libra, a partnership energy. This is an intimate energy. So there could be some intimacy happening, coming alive in your partnerships. Now, because this new moon is in Libra, the other thing I think of, and I think this is a beautiful question to ask yourself is, Libra is about that balance, right? So where maybe in your eighth house, in your money, in your debt, in, in monies or sources that jointly connect you to someone else, where do you feel out of balance? Or even in terms of out of balance, it's not always like I'm out of balance because I'm not doing enough. Do you have a great business idea, but you don't have the capital for it? Do you need to go find it? Is it time to write that business plan and go find it? And that will bring equilibrium, right? Are you sitting over there burning with the desire to study something occult, sexual, astrological, anything in the metaphysics, and you don't have a teacher? This might be the time to get ready to invest. Where do you need to adjust to have that harmony and that balance so that your equilibrium is here? That's what this new moon is helping you do. It's bringing you the peace that's that you don't have so that it can be balanced okay now on the 10th mercury is going to enter into scorpio so again lighting up the ninth house space for you phenomenal for communication because the ninth house scorpio energy is very busy this month okay we've got jupiter our biggest benefic planet up there who's bringing wisdom and opportunity to the table so you've got what it takes here to look back and make these adjustments but then we've got venus who is our smaller benefic planet and she's retrograde now we've got mercury over here and on the 23rd we're going to have the sun in scorpio Scorpio as well. So this is a busy energy. But with Mercury here, Mercury and Scorpio makes you a phenomenal observer. A phenomenal observer. You can see, you can catch those patterns. You're looking at the truth. You're not trying to walk in the opposite direction of the truth. Do you need the education to move forward? Does your faith, are you, are you fighting with the universe? Are you fighting with what you call God? Is your faith lacking right now? Or is it just so on fire that you're you're ready and willing to see what you can do with it right like what's happening in this ninth house space for you mercury is going to help you not only see it but talk about it communicate about it make decisions about it and you're clear and you're savvy here you know what you're doing now when the sun rolls in here um on the 23rd, what's going to happen is the sun brings light, heat, life, and vitality. This is the other reason I know that in this ninth house, you're trying purposely to grow and to expand yourself out, right? Whether this be a project or a book or a website or you're starting that YouTube channel, you're going to start talking to us about astrology or your passion projects that that new moon was helping you roll in. Whatever it is, the sun is saying you want to be seen here. So I know you're doing good work in this ninth house area this month. Now, on the 24th, we've got the full moon happening in Taurus. So the very first thing I want to ask you with the energy being Taurus, 
Where do you need to ground down? Taurus is a grounded energy. Where do you need to ground down, especially in your third house, because that's where this full moon is happening. Where do you need to stand your ground in your third house? This is our house of communication, thinking, decision-making, siblings, neighbors, selling things, maybe um, that website, uh, study. Do you need to ground down? Does there need to be some discipline here, some stick to do you need to get a little bit of that going on? If so, remember that the full moon says that something has to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So you could, oh, for some of you, it'll also be a training that's maybe over, okay? But whatever it is, it's going to be shift here with the full moon energy. So one of the things I would be thinking of is where do you need to have a shift in how you're communicating? Or maybe you haven't been enjoying the way um, you've been communicating or the way that people have been communicating with you and you're getting ready to shift that dynamic. Other things I think of here with the full moon is maybe you have a, a training or a project or something where you're coming to the end of making a decision and it happens here, but it's an ending so that it can bring a beginning. So don't be surprised if at this full moon time you don't see some beginnings because it will have meant that the stamp of the ending or the adjustment was here as well. Don't be afraid to change your mind about some things this month too, Pisces. It's okay right? Super okay. Now on the 26th, the Sun and Venus are actually going to be conjunct up there in Scorpio. So what this means for me, for you, <laughs> what this means for me, for you, is that your social life is going to get a shift, okay? You're going to be Switching directions here, you've got a new mentor maybe coming into your life, but someone in a social scene or in a value scene is going to be coming into your life. Is this someone who comes in as a trainer, a mentor, a teacher, and you have more value in this area, you have more life, you have um, someone to show you how to do something. This could definitely be that energy for sure. Now, on the 31st, as we end this month, we've got a couple things going on. First of all, Venus is going to take her retrograde show on the road. So she's going to leave that sign of Scorpio back up into Libra. And now you're re-looking at this eighth house space, okay? So one of the things I think of is while you're re-looking at the eighth house is where you are jointly connected. What's the value of the connections you have, you know? Are you... Um, in your sponsorships, in your collaborations, um, in maybe anything you're having to negotiate with another person or entity outside of yourself, are you willing to negotiate? Are you willing to be more open-minded with the negotiations here? Are you ready to compromise if there's something that needs to be compromised on here without compromising yourself, right? So I think this is a wonderful energy here and just, you know, definitely because it's the eighth house and this is Venus energy and it's Libra energy, which is partnership, you could definitely see something romantic or something that has to do with partnership definitely floating back up to you to see if it still has enough value in your life to proceed forward with as we're in November. Now, the other thing that happens on the 31st, which I think helps with all of that and a lot of what happens in the beginning of November, is that Mercury is going to move into Sagittarius. This is phenomenal. This is at the top of your chart. This is at the tip top up here. Mercury in Sagittarius makes you very open-minded, which is phenomenal because you're going to have to get a new perspective on things this month, Pisces. Come at things from a completely different perspective and involve someone else in it so that they can help you see if you've got the right thinking about what's going on. But Mercury here in the top of your chart in the 10th house, which is the midheaven, career, soul level calling, the gifts you have that you're going to go and take out into the world and do something with, help someone else do something with. Even your social status. My goodness, we have got all of this 8th house energy happening this month. You know, is this a time where you're actually getting married, right? Is this a time where you're changing your status? Have you gotten divorced? And so you're no longer Mr. or Mrs. fill in the blank, you have a different status in the world, or did you get a promotion at work? Because remember, the 10th house is also about the status that you carry out in public. Could you be speaking about something here with Mercury there? Yes, absolutely you could. Could you be the one hosting the training? Yeah, I think you could definitely be doing that. So it's going to be interesting to see how you find your voice, especially here at the end of the month, because it will be carrying over into next month, right? So it's going to be a really interesting month. I look forward to seeing how these things manifest in your own life. And of course, make sure you've grabbed your chart so that you can look over your own chart and see where these energies are actually hitting, okay?
All right, you guys, make sure you share your month with me, please. I really do enjoy it. And I thank you so much for watching, spending time with me. You can put everything in the comment section down below. Check out cool deals in the description box down below. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you beautiful fishies next month. Bye, guys.